Welcome to the Legacy Leaders Podcast. Are you doing the best for your client to help them create their legacy? Are you creating a plan that goes far beyond finances to help people ensure that it becomes the driving force behind all decisions? On this podcast, hosts Katie Beth Hand and Stan Miller will help you with growing your practice and your client's peace of mind. Together, they bring the best and brightest minds to share with you how to help your clients develop their best legacy. And now, here are your hosts, Katie Beth and Stan. Welcome back to the Legacy Leaders Podcast with your hosts, Stan Miller and Katie Beth Hand. Today's guest is an international bestseller, a story brand guide, and a marketing specialist. She specializes in helping businesses grow all over North America with clear and impactful marketing campaigns. Please welcome our guest for today, Jessica Embry. Jessica, thank you so, so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Stan and Katie Beth. Absolutely. So before we just dive right into what it is you do, I would love it if you would take just a few minutes and talk to our listeners a little bit about your background and what got you started in this industry. So I always grew up with a love for marketing and what impacts people into buying products. So I knew from an early age when I had my first business when I was 10 years old doing door-to-door salesman for blueberries that this is what I wanted to do. I still have that business card to this day. Um, so I've always had that entrepreneurial spirit and I knew I wanted to go into marketing at a young age. And when I came across Tulip Media, I knew this was the right fit for me to help our client partners grow their business with impactful messaging and also get them the leads and the qualified leads that they're looking for to grow their business. Fantastic. That's, that is, um, phenomenal and a very interesting background. So tell our listeners a little bit about exactly what your specialty is and what you do now. So I'm the creative director at Tulip Media Group, and we specialize in print marketing. So custom magazines and newsletters that a lot of our businesses all over North America are looking for to build credibility, brand awareness, longevity in their marketing. But we also specialize in digital marketing because we know how important that is in this day and age. And so that's PPC, Google ads, um, blogging, e-news, and website messaging because your website is your storefront and you need to make sure that that is ready to go for visitors that are coming onto your site. Absolutely. So talk to us, and we touched on this actually, you guys, a little bit before we even hit record today. Talk to us about uh, your story brand training and that how that impacts the work that you do with your clients. Absolutely. Um, so back in 2019, we had a huge issue at Tulip Media. Our cost of acquisition was $40,000 just to get a new client. So we knew we had a huge problem in our marketing. Um, and overnight we realized that we had to stop doing a push strategy and start doing a pull strategy. We had to stop talking to people who weren't raising their hand with the problems that, um, we were trying to solve with our digital marketing or our print marketing. We stopped doing trade shows, we stopped doing cold calls. Um, and overnight we redid all of our messaging on our site. We just finished reading, building a story brand by Donald Miller. Um, We started doing more PPC. We started doing uh, competitive and keyword analysis and blogging, and we've really fine-tuned our marketing. And within three months, our cost of acquisition went from $40,000 to $4,000. So just doing this pivot on our marketing grew our revenue exponentially. We wouldn't be here where we are today. COVID would have destroyed our business if we still relied on trade shows and calling. Um, And what it did for us, it also gave value to our clients because what we were doing, we were the guinea pigs. So we said, hey, this worked to our clients. And they were like, yes, please do this for our business. Please help us recreate our website messaging. Help us with our Google ads. Help us with our print campaigns so we can retain our our customers and provide value with them through print campaigns. So it's really changed our business and how we've grown in the last few years. Absolutely. I I love that. And is there an ideal client or business that you tend to have, or is this something that is really kind of across the board with any industry? That's the beauty of our programs. They work with all industries. We have everything from insurance agencies to real estate, to financial wealth management firms. We have lawyers, um, we have jewelry, metal, uh, we have fire truck manufacturers. So we work with a different various Uh, diverse clientele. And that's what actually keeps us sharp too, because we're learning a lot about different industries that sometimes they have a lot of these problems in common and we're able to stay on top of a lot of different trends too. 
That's great. Okay, Stan, I know you're full of questions for Jessica. I'll give you a turn. Yeah, this is kind of a special thing for me because you know, Jessica and I ha have in common, I, I guess, that we've both been to the story brand training. She's obviously gotten a lot deeper into it than I have, but I spent my weekend in Nashville with Donald Miller. And I have to say, as I was telling you guys earlier, before we hit the record button on this call, that that has been one of the most influential uh, perspectives I've brought into my business life since I can really remember. And so obviously from what I can tell Jessica, that's an influential that provides an influ a really influential framework for the way you guys approach your business. I'm going to ask you to, to you know, to just talk a little bit about the story brand framework and what the concept is behind it, because it does it is a it is a really interesting way to think about not uh, think about marketing to think about your business to you know and and even like you know a political campaign. It's a it's a way of thinking about how you position what you do and how you communicate it. So I, I think most people, most of our listeners maybe have not heard of, of Donald Miller and story brand. And so I'd like for you to uh, take a, take a bit and just talk about that. Absolutely. So the story brand framework is broken down into seven different parts and what it is all about is discovering who your core customer is and what messaging is going to resonate with them. I think a lot of times businesses get stuck in their own headspace and they make themselves the hero of the store, their story. They talk about how long they've been in business, but we have three to five seconds to grab someone's attention and really get them to convert on your site. So you need to use messaging that's going to okay. resonate with them. Um, so that's framework is broken down to seven pieces. You have the character, you have the problem, you have the guide. You have the plan. We're very simple human beings. We need a plan on our website to showcase where those visitors need to go and what's going to happen next. We have a success and we have failure and the call to action. A lot of us miss out on that call to action. What's that call to action that people need to take on your site to get what they're looking for at the end of the day? If you're an insurance agency, get a quote. If you're a real estate uh, firm, it is buy your house now. It is a call to action that speaks to them. That's not ambiguous because the learn more and the read more don't do much for your site. It's something that gets right to the point. So one of the interesting things about the whole story brand framework is this idea that that all successful marketing campaigns, all, all successful political campaigns, maybe all successful businesses are really built on the same platform as a successful movie script, right? Mm. That's the that's the core idea, right? That it's, if you look at the architecture, you know, if you, if you took, if you take a successful movie and, and dissect it, it, it breaks out into those seven components that you mentioned. And it does deal with, you know, who, who's the hero of the story, you know, and what role do we play as advisors? Well, you know, as a financial advisor, as an estate planning attorney, or in your case, as a, you know, as a, as a marketing you know, consultant for somebody, what, what is your role in the movie? And the point you're making is that your role is you're not the hero, right? You're, you're the mentor. So like in star Wars, for example, you're not Luke Skywalker, you're, you're, you're Yoda. Right. And, and that's, that's the concept, right? And we have to, we have to understand and make sure we understand our role in, in the movie. And it's not to be the hero. It's to be the, to be the mentor. Yeah, and that's why people are Googling you at the uh, Googling for things like what your business does at the end of the day. They're searching in um, car insurance quotes near me, um, divorce lawyer near me, estate planning near me. They're searching for a problem. They're not searching for your name. So you need to keep that in mind in your messaging. Very smart. Talk to us a little bit to kind of take a turn. You mentioned, so you do a lot of well, let's let's back up. You do a lot of print media. So tell us exactly what that program looks like and what service that provides for your clients. So we have a lot of clients that come to us saying, listen, I want to build credibility. I want to stand out a little bit among my competitors and I want to showcase value. And print media is a great way to do that. We have a lot of people coming to us saying print marketing's dead. What are you guys doing? 
but it's not. It still brings that credibility and longevity to the table. It creates a sense of community. You have a legacy leaders community right now because you do this podcast. Market, print marketing does something very similar. It retains people and you're giving that value to them. So Tulip provides a turnkey solution. We provide everything from ghostwriting to project management. We have designers and proofers on hand. We take care of all the distribution so you don't have to. And again, it really showcases value and people love holding something tangible in their hands. And there's something to be said about that in this day and age, especially where your in MTS inbox is your mailbox right now. You probably get hundreds of emails every day. You probably get a handful of print flyers or mail in your mailbox. So it's a way to stand out and cut through the noise. Absolutely. And is that something, do you tailor it in conjunction with the digital marketing you do as well? Yeah, we're firm believers in repurposing content. So if you're writing an article for your magazine, why not put that on your blog? Why not ha use your online magazine for your email newsletters? Why not put it in your signatures? We love repurposing content. We love integrating content. So we're, we're always looking for ways to cross those platforms. I love it. That's great. And then tell us a little bit about, so in the digital age that we live in, what are your tips and, and advice? How do you use, let's say like Google, how do you use that to help your customers? So we take a very strategic approach because you can waste a lot of money on Google. I'm sure listeners are very aware of that. And one thing that we do is a competitive and keyword strategy. So we look at what your competitors are doing and what keywords or phrases people are searching for in order to find your competitors. Um, so for example, if people are searching for a legacy leaders, legacy podcast, we want to make sure that's a keyword in your Google ad strategy. If they're looking for estate planning near me, that needs to be a keyword in your strategy. So you are using that poll strategy to pull in people that are searching for you. So we're very, very big fans of Google because you're using that poll strategy, not that push. It's fantastic. That's great. And tell us about, um, a little bit about, I knew nothing about the world of website SEO and how that turns into conversions and all of those things. It was kind of a deep dive for me last year. So for our listeners who may also not really understand how to optimize those things, what are your tips and advice for that? So if you're looking at your website and you don't have a lot of time and resources, the one thing I would say to you is make sure your header is ready. So Don, Donald Miller calls this the grunt test. Make sure it, it, it goes through three things, which is you have three to five seconds to grab someone's attention. So you need to tell them what you do, how, how it helps them survive and thrive, and what that call to action is. Just having a header that is very clear on your site, the top of your site, will impact your conversions quite a bit and get you those qualified leads you're looking for. Um, another thing we like to say at Tulip is use language that is easily to understand. I find we get what we call in the curse of knowledge in this day and age. We've been in the industry for so long, we start to use jargon people don't understand. And this can be very simple to do if you're the one doing your messaging. So always get that third party perspective, especially in real estate or estate planning, law, finance. We are using jargon people might not understand. Um, a great example of that is I, we work with a lot of insurance agencies in print and digital, and they always used to say commercial insurance. I said, that's great, but people understand business insurance instead of commercial more and more. That's a keyword. Let's search more and more. So use business insurance on your page. So, so simple. And yet something I do feel like we live in an age, we're all good at what we do, right? And so we get so immersed into the world of whatever it is, whether it's marketing or whether for us, it's estate planning. Those words don't seem like jargon. They just seem very commonplace. So it's, I love um, the idea of, of just taking things and stepping back and simplifying that down. I do feel like jargon is one thing we do tend to use a bit too much without realizing it. And we try to be mindful of that with our estate planning clients, but it's still um, something to be, to be very mindful of, certainly. Yeah. And so, oh. no, go ahead. Sorry. Even, even when you're asking about SEO, some of your listeners are going, well, what's SEO? It's search engine optimization. It's, it's what makes your site so nice. Like what makes your site so good that Google loves it? So it's a, having a header description. So when you Google, you see those little titles on the page, those are headers. 
Then you see a little description below. Those are meta descriptions. So making sure you have those best practices in place. So Google loves your site and they see you as a credible source. Absolutely. Go ahead, Stan. Yeah, I was about I was about to ask you this. You know, one of the things I know that you think about a lot is customer retention. Okay. So talk a little bit about how you approach that, you know, because it's not just getting, not just getting the client or the customer, right? It's maintaining that relationship over time. So what what's your best thinking about how we should be doing that? Customer retention is almost more important than getting qualified leads because if you lose one customer, now you have to get two to even grow. So you have to always make sure your customers are happy. Um, one of the ways we like to do this at Tulip is having an upfront contract. So what are clearly defining what those expectations are, what the outcomes are looking for. That way everybody's on the same page and we're communicating correctly. We have monthly meetings with a lot of our clients just to get check in with them, have, build that relationship, make sure that everything is going smoothly, not only in their business life, but their personal life too. Um, we're big fans of sending thank you cards. We're big fans of um, sending gifts to our clients. And we also send them our quarterly magazine too, because we want to showcase value to them. So we don't want to just showcase value on our consulting calls. We want to give them free resources that they can have and use in their business as well. Tell me about the magazine. That sounds interesting. So we we produce what we also sell. We have a quarterly marketing magazine that we get give out to our subscribers. And it has everything in there from marketing to sales to leadership, uh, tips and tricks, value-added content. Um, this issue that's coming out in this fall is all about AI and how it's affecting the industry because that's such a hot talk topic right now. Um, so we always want to provide value to our clients. And one of the ways we do that is our mark, our marketing magazine. That's very, that is very cool. I love that. And that's something you do for your clients as well. Correct. Yeah, do you have. tailor, do you tailor the magazines and content and all of that, the branding and everything, just depending on what industry you're doing that for? Absolutely. We want to make sure this magazine that we're putting out for our clients, this custom magazine is branded to them. It represents them. It, it complements their brand, has content in there that's going to help their readers. So we have a lot of insurance magazines at Tulip. Um, so sometimes there's personal, sometimes there's commercial. Um, we have a few law magazines at Tulip. Again, we are, they're doing case studies. They're doing, um, things that are happening in the industry to keep other lawyers up to date. So there's a lot of different ways you can use magazines, but we always make sure that it's complementing and representing their brand. We want to make sure this is a custom magazine. It doesn't look like a different brand. That's very cool. For and So you've been doing this for a while. What would you say would be the number one mistake that you see people making when it comes to people out there trying to do their own marketing? The biggest mistake again is they they're using jargon, they're using messaging that's not going to resonate, or they don't have a website that's ready for visitors. If you don't have a storefront or website ready for visitors, your marketing's going to fall flat. So you want to make sure your website's ready. Um, so always make sure your website's ready. Use jargon that's easy for people to understand and have a call to action. We always forget about the call to action, but it is a very simple thing to implement on your site and in your marketing. And it makes such a difference. Yeah, I don't know about you, Stan, but as Jessica's talking, I'm thinking through the different websites we have and thinking about all the updates we need to make. So thank yeah. you, Jessica. Good, good ideas and suggestions. It's so simple, and yet it's just something you don't really think through. When we're creating our we our own websites and, and deciding things to go in there, um, I, I feel like we tend to kind of be talking to ourselves and not necessarily thinking through the process that our client would be walking through when they find us and then find us on our website. So great advice, things I'll write down and Stan, you and I can talk about that later. <laughs> yep, absolutely, I wanna do that. I, I will say, I haven't read it yet, but your book is on order and it's headed headed my way. Awesome. And uh, and so, so I haven't read it yet. So take a minute and tell us about your book. And by the way, the, you know, the, the, the price that Amazon is charging me for it was what, three or $4? So oh, yes, it's on sale right now, listeners. Quite a quite a bargain. So uh, I'm guessing it's worth more than the three or four dollars I'm paying for it. So what uh, what uh, what what you know? 
quick and dirty, what wisdom and insight you know, can I expect to receive whenever I curl up with it this weekend? With a hot, hot coffee too. Um, yep. Double sales, zero sales people. It is our story on how we implemented that strategy that brought us from the 40000 to $4,000. But in that book too, it talks about the problem that a lot of businesses are having, which is their sales and marketing do not work together. They do not communicate. So marketing is doing one type of messaging and upfront contract. And then the people come in as a lead and then they go to sales and sales are doing something completely different. So it's talking about how you can align your sales and marketing. It's talking about how to build your sales engine because it's very important to have a sales engine. And it's not necessarily always your salespeople who are doing the sales. At Tulip, we don't have any salespeople. We have people in production who get excited about the product we're selling. We talk the talk, we walk the walk. So when we're talking to a potential client, they get excited too, because we're like, okay, what keywords are you using? What's your goals in PPC? What type of print marketing you're doing? What design are you thinking about? So we get our customers excited. And this book is just outlining how we got that cost of acquisition down, what tips and tricks you can implement in your business. And also there's a lot of case studies in there as well. I had to crack it open. It's going to be here tomorrow. Awesome. I can't wait for you to read it, Stan. <laughs> Perfect. And, you know, Stan, I will get you a copy of um, his book as well. And Stan, when you're done with Jessica's book, I hope you'll share it with me also. Uh, well, Jessica, this has been fantastic. And like I said, you've given us lots to think through. Is there anything that we didn't cover that you would like our listeners to know about? I just always want to remind listeners to keep it very simple in your marketing. Um, I think today in this day and age, we get so overwhelmed with what different platforms there are, what different strategies there are, but always remember where is your core customer on your platforms? Where are they visiting? How are they speaking? So if your core customer is a B2B business, maybe LinkedIn is your sole platform. So always remember who your core customer is and that's where you tailor your marketing to. That is fantastic, fantastic advice. Well, thank you so much to all of our listeners. This has been the Legacy Leaders Podcast with your hosts, Stan Miller and Katie Beth Hand. And our guest today was Jessica Embry. For more information about Jessica and the work that she does, you can visit tulipmediagroup.com and we will link that in the show notes for you. And don't forget that Jessica's book, Double Sales, Zero Salespeople is currently on sale right now on Amazon. So go and grab your copy today. Jessica, thank you so much for joining us. This You have given us a lot to think about. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to the Legacy Leaders Podcast with Katie Beth Hand and Stan Miller. For more information on them and the show, please visit PinnacleLegacyLaw.com. If you like what you've learned today, do share the program with your friends and subscribe wherever podcasts are found.